ever virtual 305 iftar. My name is Mohammed Gamrawi. I'm the senior program coordinator for the Jaffer Center. And as we know, the last two months for everyone really on a global scale has been nothing short of challenging. But those challenges have really highlighted the importance of community and togetherness. When people needed help, others were there to help. When there were those who were in need, others were there to give. These are basic principles taught to us, not only in Islam, but in nearly all religions. And Muslims have been especially mindful of these principles during the sacred month of Ramadan, when we have family gatherings and daily iftars at the mosque, followed by prayers. Unfortunately, that hasn't been the case this Ramadan. But COVID-19 hasn't just impacted Ramadan. Many re religions have had their major holidays impacted. We've had Easter impacted by this pandemic. We've had Passover impacted uh, during this pandemic. But through it all, whether we're religious or non-religious, our community has stuck together. And finally, after all of this, we're near a sort of light at the end of the tunnel, a beacon of hope, a sense of finally returning to some normalcy that we've all been longing. And that's why we're here today to create a space for reflection of our shared humanity, especially during this challenging time. This program will be filled with hope, spirituality, and optimism as we bring community leaders together to partake in our 305 iftar. And ladies and gentlemen, do we have a treat for you here tonight? I'm really excited because I'm joined here today by a wonderful A-list group of speakers and community leaders. I'd like to thank Dean John F. Stack Jr., President Mark B. Rosenberg, Mayor Frances Suarez, Dr. Mohsen Jaffer, Dr. Mohideen Mesbahi, as well as the many other community leaders who I'll introduce later on in the program. They have all given their time to be here with you on this wonderful evening. So with that, let's go ahead and get started with our first speaker, Professor of Politics, International Relations and Law, as well as the founding Dean of the Stephen J. Green School of International and Public Affairs, Please help me welcome Dr. John F. Stack, Jr. Good evening and welcome. I am honored to be here tonight to celebrate our first virtual iftar dinner with all of you. Before we begin, I want to acknowledge Dr. Mohsin and Mrs. Fazia Jaffer. The Jaffer's family's contribution to FIU and their unwavering dedication are the reasons we are all here. Their transformational gift made the Jaffer Center a reality and we are forever grateful. I also want to thank all of our wonderful supporters Muslim as well as non-Muslim who have helped make the Jaffer Center possible. The Mohsin and Fazia Jaffer Center for Muslim World Studies is dedicated to promoting greater understanding of the global Muslim community and to exploring the rich perspectives, histories, and cultures of Muslims everywhere. With this dinner, we honor the holy month of Ramadan and we bring awareness to the global Muslim experience. Tonight, both Muslims and non-Muslims come together to break the fast in a celebratory meal and to encourage with each other. These events, like these we learn from each other. Through, these, through this event, we learn from each other we celebrate each other and together we create a more just, peaceful and prosperous world. Thank you for joining us. Now it is my privilege to introduce the fifth president of Florida International University, Dr. Mark B. Rosenberg. You're on mute, doctor. You're on mute. There, here we go. Great, good evening, everyone. Thank you, Dr. Stack. Thank you, uh, Mohammed. It's great to be here uh, with everyone on our first virtual iftar. This event is truly special 
bringing together local leaders to reflect on the importance of community and togetherness, collaboration, cooperation, harmony. That's what we represent here this evening, and that's our hope for the future. This message rings true now uh, more than ever, as Mohammed has pointed out during these very challenging times. With us this evening are leaders who are creating unity, cohesion, and community as the world faces great adversity and uncertainty. And I would like to especially recognize City of Miami Mayor Francis Suarez, an FIU graduate that we're so proud of, as well as Dr. Mohsen Jaffer. Our Mohsen and Fauzia Jaffer Center for Muslim World Studies is dedicated to the study of the challenges facing the Muslim world. The promotion of healthy dialogue among the world's faiths and Islamic sects, and the production of objective research and analysis to inform national and international affairs. Equally important, the center on campus offers a space for Muslim student life and a hub for intellectual and cultural activities for Muslim and non-Muslim students alike. And although I wish that we could gather in person to recognize our many blessings, I'm grateful that technology allows us to share our thoughts and perspectives. So I wish you all a blessed Ramadan and may this be a period of reflection, Friday prayers, community, hope, peace, and opportunity. Thank you. Thank you so much, President Rosenberg, for those amazing remarks. Next, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the first Miami-born mayor of the city of Miami, joining us the day after the city has just reopened, which I'm sure has been a very challenging endeavor. Please help me in welcoming Mayor Frances Suarez. Thank you, Mohammed, and thank you, Mr. President, uh, Dean Stack, and others, uh, Dr. Jaffer, um, Saif, and his lovely wife, who were the first to invite, have invited me to an iftar uh, dinner uh, many years ago. Uh, this is, uh, as we've all said, uh, unique in terms of the fact that it's virtual uh, in nature, but it, it is not surprising to me that as an FIU grad, uh, Saif and, and, and President Rosenberg have chosen uh, to lead this uh, effort, which uh, as, as uh, Dr. Stack said, and, and, and the president so eloquently said, and Mohammed said as well, this is a, uh, an enriching of our community, bringing us together. And I, I don't pretend to be a, a religious scholar, but I, uh, the little that I know is, informs me that, that Ramadan is in, in, in part a month of fasting so that uh, we can understand the troubles and the tribulations that others have to go through. And in a time like, like this, where we are literally feeding people, um, you know, and, and I have to do uh, multiple feedings in a given week. I'm going to be doing one tomorrow where we're literally, um, you know, having, struggling to feed people uh, in our city because of the fact that our economy has been completely and utterly devastated and paralyzed. I think it, it, it takes on a, a particularly... Um, important meaning um, for all of us, and it brings us together. And I think what's beautiful is that, you know, that Miami is a collection of so many different faiths, and the faiths that we have serve to enrich us. And certainly uh, the Muslim faith is one that has incredibly deep roots uh, in the city of Miami with uh, one of uh, the oldest mosques in the state of Florida, uh, where uh, Muhammad Ali, of course, uh, was, uh, was a member. And, and he, uh, he famously said uh, that service is the price that we pay, the rent that we pay uh, for our space here on earth. And so uh, for me, it's just a, a tremendous honor and a privilege to be invited to this very unique celebration of an incredible religion that uh, enriches our community, our faith, our friends, um, and, and reminds us that we should, uh, even if we're from different faiths, that we should look to other faiths for wisdom, uh, for truths, and, and for guidance and growth. Because, um, 
you know, I, I can tell you that as a, as a, as a person, um, I have learned a tremendous amount from the, the different faiths and the friendships and the brotherhoods and sisterhoods that I have uh, from different faiths. And it's made me a better uh, elected official. It's certainly made me a better husband. It's made me a better father. It's made me a better member of the community. So for me, um, I'm honored to be an FIU graduate. I'm honored to be invited by this prestigious uh, panel of individuals. And, and, and I'm honored to be part of uh, this virtual celebration of, of what this very special uh, time of the year means uh, to the Muslim faith and hoping to the next time that we are celebrating Ramadan, uh, it can be uh, in person and we can be reflecting on the lessons that we learned throughout this process and why uh, fasting brought us closer uh, to those in our community who are struggling uh, to make ends meet and who, um, you know, and who really need our help. Thank you so much, Mer Suarez. Indeed, a very unique event. And uh, we also hope that next year we can be sitting uh, in person having a, a, an amazing iftar dinner. So thank you for, for your remarks, Mayor. Uh, next up, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the president and CEO at Senior Medical Associates and Salyan Medical Management. He is also a board member of the Coalition of South Florida Muslim Organizations and the lead donor of the Jaffer Center for Muslim World Studies. Please help me in welcoming Dr. Mustan Jaffer. Uh, good evening, folks. Thank you for coming to this iftar. I will begin by invoking thanks to that ever-loving creator who is so kind and merciful. We also give thanks as Americans, despite these trying times, we are a prosperous, blessed nation, which has got liberty and justice and democracy, which is a great blessing. Um, I also give thanks to FIU for the wisdom to set up a center like this and reach out to the world, which is one fourth of humanity are Muslims, but also to become from this public university to become a beacon of light of how to reach out and bridge the gaps that people have, because it's only through understanding and outreach that we get to know other people. And that's the only way to achieve peace and prosperity. Mayor Suarez, I want to tell you a story. When I saw that handsome young face, it brings a very pleasant memory to my mind. Um, 1980s, 84, 83, 84, 85, I was a resident at Jackson Memorial Hospital and I lived in Fontainebleau Park. Across the street was a very pleasant older gentleman and his wife. He was very proud of his son, the mayor of Miami your grandfather. He was a very pleasant person. He was very proud of your father and I'm sure he'd be very proud of you. So that's a little anecdote I had to tell you. Uh, but many faiths prescribe fasting, you know? I mean, if you look at it, Christianity, Judaism, Hinduism, Islam, all prescribe fasting. But when you look at fasting as a, it's a very painful and hard sensation. You know, when you're hungry, you're hungry. <laughs> You see nothing but food in your mind. But all the faiths have realized that through this hardship and through enduring this hardship, a very profound change comes through you, where you become more spiritual, you become more connected, and you also become humble. You also connect with people who don't have materially and food-wise. So this is a sensation that really creates your nearness to your creator and to your fellow mankind. And I'm glad we've been having this iftar. I'm sorry I can't shake your hands and be, uh, be with you, but this is, is the near best thing. But this hunger is also, uh, it, it's what Mayor just said. Um, that's why the Muslim communities all over South Florida are feeding thousands of people every day with giveaway meals, with drive through cars that come through their center. And even where they don't have a mask, like for example, in, I live in Western, we partnered with the Rotary Club so that we can do Rotary Feeds the Frontline. So the, we, this, this calamity has brought out the best in us as Americans. And we realize that they are fellow citizens who are not well fed. In fact, my wife and me and our foundation is also supplying food in Africa and India because they don't have a safety net here. At least the government can give a check. 
those people are day laborers, they don't have any funds and they're in dire straits because they're not working, they're not allowed, there's a lockdown. So the world is suffering. But today we can communicate and celebrate Ramadan and Iftar where you, at the end of the day, you come and break bread and you share your time with people of all class, color and creed to share this togetherness and reach out. So I'm very happy that we have a president and an institution that has reached out and has created this center so that this world may become better partners with the whole world and our children can become true global citizens. If our children get this global experience here in Florida, they will be better servers for us tomorrow as a society and better human beings and definitely much better Americans. I also thank um, uh, Cosmos Coalition partners. All these people from the Muslim community have come together to form this coalition so that we can make these bridges and make this connection. I thank you all for taking the time to be here. I'm sorry that we cannot again bring out the, what we are famous for, um, Dr. Gumrawi and Dr. Misbai and the whole team and Dean Stack usually bring a very delicious meal. We can't offer you to this time, but God willing, next year, let's break bread together. God bless you all. Thank you so much, Dr. Jaffer. God willing, uh, inshallah, next year we will all be together and be able to break bread together. Uh, next up, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the founding director of the Mossad and Fazia Jaffer Center for Muslim World Studies at Florida International University. He's also an associate professor in the Politics and International Relations Department. Please welcome Dr. Mohideen Mesbahi. Dr. Masbahi, uh, you have to unmute. So I have to start again. Yes. Okay. Thank you, Muhammad. Uh, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim. In the name of God, uh, the most merciful and the most compassionate and the salam to, to all. Um, I have been given the impossible task of talking about the center and everything else and, uh, and, and basically contextualizing where we are in the world in about three or four minutes. Uh, I do my best. I was thinking about what is unique about this center uh, this afternoon. And I thought um, perhaps uh, no other center at FIU, I could be mistaken, that is genuinely is a byproduct of these real synergy between the community and FIU. I remember uh, not too long ago, 2013, I accompanied uh, President Rosenberg to a big dinner by Cosmos. Uh, and uh, he gave a great lecture as usual, he, he does. And then the community softly, but gently and also firmly challenged him. that uh, Would you create a major center at FIU? We know FIU has a military studies program, but we need a major center. And typical of Rosenberg, he, he said, with his vision and boldness, you help me, we will create one of the best centers in the country. And here we are uh, several years later with the help and assistance of, of uh, another visionary, John Stack and his great team at FIU and, and Green School. We have an emerging young, but very influential actually impactful center at FIU. We had perhaps the largest numbers of the lecture series at FIU. We have a very large numbers of certificate programs in undergraduate and graduate program with the help of my able assistant, Mohammed. Um, and uh, just look at this number. We have six or seven Fulbright fellows currently at the Jafar Center from China, from Morocco, from UAE, from Pakistan, and from India, and more to come. Um, I was just thinking how to contextualize our time and how to actually reflect on this community um, relations with FIU and in spirit of Ramadan and, and Iftar. What is new about the, about the coronavirus crisis actually? Why it is so unprecedented? I think uh, as, a, as a student of politics and world history, I've never remember any uh, time in humanity's experience 
that a single event or issue simultaneously has preoccupied the entire humanity, the states, government, leaders, people, globally and locally alike. Second, uh, never before there has been a common threat to whole humanity as a whole. It's not about war, it's not about nuclear proliferation, it's not about uh, terrorism, it's about health related, environmentally induced crisis for, for the whole humanity, which doesn't know any borders, wealth, race, gender, religion, nor civilization's boundaries. And therefore it, it requires a collective response. And we have seen this collective response, you know, display all over the world, actually, and where the heroes are not soldiers, but, uh, but nurses and doctors and community leaders, as Dr. Jaffa mentioned, providing food and, and, and support for everybody else. Um, but I'd like to um, um, uh, look at also critically about where we are and not to talk only about the, the good things that we have done. Um, I think um, there is a question that we are all in the same storm together, it's true. But I saw an article the other day which says, I posed the question, yes, it is true that we are all in the same storm, but whether we are all sitting in the same boat or not. And I think it is a critical issue and I raise it because um, um, I think we are facing an enormous challenge socially and politically and economically and emotionally. And the mayor and everybody else knows better than everybody else. The governments around the world, regardless of where they come from, West, East, modern, democratic, non-democratic, they were not ready to deal with this. I don't think they are ready to deal with this crisis or similar crisis. And that means this, that local initiative, university centers, and centers of religious orientations or non-religious orientations have enormous responsibility and opportunity to jump in and fill the gap. And I think it is here that great institution should or can develop programs, approaches and attitudes that reach out to the communities in a way that makes us all feel that we are not only experiencing the same storm, but we also are in the same boat. Charity, compassion, and community should not be a temporary undertaking, but have to become a strategic choice and a life paradigm. This is a challenging proposition, but I think our compassionate community and our great university are up to it and can work together towards that objective. Thank you for the opportunity to be with you and speak to you, and God bless you all, and stay safe, inshallah. Inshallah. Thank you so much, Dr. Mesbahi. Um, really some, some great comments and a lot to take away and, and digest from that. Um, we definitely should uh, recognize that this is an opportunity not to just give during this crisis, but to also remember that we need to do it even after this crisis uh, has passed through. So uh, with that, I would like to thank all of our first set of speakers, uh, President Rosenberg, Dr. Jaffer, Mayor Suarez, and Dr. Masbahi, thank you all so much for your uh, remarks. I also want to recognize that we do have a number of members of the diplomatic community in attendance um, who are also uh, tuning in on this virtual iftar. So we want to go ahead and thank them for joining us. Uh, and we appreciate you joining us tonight and uh, 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 sitting with us during this community reflection. Now I'd like to go ahead and introduce some of the different community leaders that we have joining us for our 305 iftar tonight. Uh, we have Imam Dr. Abdul Hamid Samra, Lana Shahada, Shabir Motorola, the Honorable Susan Harper, Nestor Rodriguez, as well as Brian Siegel. Um, so I want to go ahead and uh, we're going to start first with a pillar of the South Florida Muslim community. Uh, he's an Imam at both the Islamic Center of Greater Miami Masjid uh, slash Muslim Community Association and the Flagler Masjid. Please help me in welcoming Imam Dr. Abdul Hamid Samra. Uh, Assalamu alaikum. Peace be upon you and good evening. Thank you, Muhammad, and thank you, everyone. I'm honored and privileged to be with you. I really missed meeting with you in person, but I thank all of those who organized this virtual iftar. Well, iftar without food is not an iftar, but I heard 
Next year, hopefully we can do that. So we have a rent check. We Muslims are commanded to say Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim when we start doing any work. So we start in the name of God, the most gracious, the most merciful. This to remind us that Allah is the most gracious, the most merciful, and to always expect good and to have a positive attitude toward anything we do. For us, Ramadan is different this year when we had to stay home. When I heard about the coronavirus back in January, thought came to my mind that we may not be able to be in the masjid during the Ramadan and be with our community, having iftar, eating together, praying together. But immediately, a verse from the Holy Quran came to my mind, which is coming from chapter 52, verse 84. فَاصْبِرْ لِحُكْمِ رَبِّكْ فَإِنَّكَ بِأَعْيُنِنَا وَسَبِّحْ بِحَمْدِ رَبِّكَ حِينَ تَقُومْ So wait patiently for your Lord's judgment. For you, for you are under our care and protection. And glorify your Lord with his praise when you rise up. This an, this an assurance from God of his care and protection to every believer. Our Prophet Muhammad, peace be upon him, said in his hadith, hadith is a teaching or saying of, his, of the Prophet, said how wonderful is the case of a believer. There is good for him in everything. And this applies only to a believer. If, pros if prosperity attains him, he expresses gratitude to Allah. And that is good for him. And if adversity falls or befalls him, he endures, endures it patiently, and that is also better for him. The Prophet also reminded us by saying, if, one, if anyone among you is secure in mind in his life, healthy in body, and has food, for the day, it is as though the whole world has been brought into his position. I'm grateful to God and also very grateful to our community who saw a positive aspect of this pandemic and came forward to do all acts of charity to help people who were affected by the coronavirus. At our masjid, we offered meals daily and offered Ramadan food basket weekly and offered some financial helps also for needy family and needy people. As Muslim, we try to remain as positive as we can and make the most of what we have. This is a time or this time is a test so we try to, we try our best and to God, we leave the rest. Thank you so much again. And I hope and pray for um, safety and health, good health for all people, especially those who are in the front lines, those who are in the healthcare and those who are the first responder to this uh, pandemic. And I pray to Allah to help us uh, be good citizens, be united, and work together for the well-being of our community. Thank you so much. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Thank you so much, Imam Samra. We really appreciate your words and for joining us tonight. Uh, next, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Lana Shahada. Lana, as a doctoral candidate in the Department of Politics and International Relations, can you maybe speak a little bit about what you're grateful for during this time? Thank you, Mohammed, and thank you to the Office of Engagement, the Jaffer Center, and all the organizations that were involved. 
organizing this event. I am particularly humbled to be included in such an impressive conversation, a little bit away from spirituality to a more pragmatic and practical discussion on inclusion and community engagement. So as a researcher who concentrates specifically on numbers um, and equations, I, like many other social scientists, have been left in complete awe with the current health crisis. I'm used to using my numbers, my equations, and the abilities to forecast events as my go-to, which obviously, given the circumstances, I cannot do. However, this Ramadan, Ramadan 2020, does not only fall during a pandemic. It is taking place at a time where we are a few months shy of an important general election. This election is not only significant in terms of who wins the presidency, Rather, it is significant for how we as a Muslim community engage in the electoral process. I, like many of my Muslim brethren, was born and raised in the US. I grew up in Parkland, Florida, and I was part of the public school system. I'd like to note that Parkland is a beautiful affluent city, um, but it's not very, let's say, convivial to its Muslim neighbors, let alone a girl with a hijab on. However, in more recent times, I'd like to point out that community leaders like many of you here and people like Saif, Umar, Muhammad, Dr. Misbahi, who have been very active in our community have changed the storyline. We now see that as Muslims, educated and active members of society, we are part of the framework of the American identity. When you attend an institution like FIU, you can easily see Muslim men and women employed as staff, administration, faculty, and students. My hijab has become part of my American identity, not in spite of my American identity. So today I wanna to remind you all to take advantage of your American privilege, to participate in the electoral process and to engage in our larger community. We have to remember as Muslims, our community isn't just members of our mosque, but it's part of our larger American community. We have always been part of the fabric of American society since as early as Thomas Jefferson um, owned a Quran. So it is up to us and the generation to come to ensure that we continue to engage within it. I'm grateful for our society, but most of all, I'm grateful for a community that continues to be engaged. Thank you. Wonderful. Thank you so much, Lana. Um, you really bring up some good points. Uh, it's very easy to be forgetful that we have a lot of uh, very important, uh, such as the general election coming up. And so it's uh, very important to make sure that our voice is heard, um, not just as a Muslim community, but as people uh, throughout the entire nation as well. So thank you for that. Uh, next, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Mr. Shabir Motrawalla as a community leader and founding board member of COSMOS or the Coalition of South Florida Muslim Organizations. Shabir, can you maybe talk to us a little bit about what you're grateful for uh, during this time? Shabir, you're still muted. Okay, can you hear me now? We can hear you. Okay, uh, assalamu alaikum. Peaceful greeting to all. I'm grateful to represent Cosmos here among the most esteemed leadership of South Florida. On a personal note, I'm grateful that me and my family have so far skipped the bad side of the Uh, Shabir, Shabir, I'm sorry, we, we've actually lost you for sound, Shabir. If we could ask you to pause for one second. Oh, 
All right, I think we have lost Shabir. Um, we'll probably go ahead and uh, try to get him back as soon as we can. I'm very sorry about that. In the meantime, let's go ahead and just move to our next speaker. Um, I'd like to introduce the Council General of Canada in Miami, the Honorable Susan Harper. Susan, if you could please join us and, and talk a little bit about what you're grateful for during this time. Susan, can you hear me? Hello. Ah, yes, Shabir, you're yes. back. Okay, okay. We, lost, we lost you on sound for a little bit. Okay, you did? We okay. did, yeah, so, we wanna go ahead and continue. Okay, where did I stop? Where did I get off? Uh, so, so let me say, <laughs> We are thank I'm thankful for many of the work we have done in the community through Cosmos leadership and volunteers, providing free meals and free food baskets. And through this, by distributing these food baskets and ready meals, we as Muslim are able to represent a true meaning of fasting during the month of Ramadan. And I'm grateful for many organizations who are represented here, including Jaffer Center, in joining us to hold many live webinars and dialogue to show unity, to fight rising anti-Semitism, Islamophobia, and hate against Asian. The same group which are on the forefront as healthcare provider or first responder, helping the victims of COVID-19 and even putting their own lives at risk. And finally, I'm thankful for the cooperation and understanding among many interfaith organizations to keep our faith strong through dialogue. And if I missed it, I'm very thankful that me and my family has escaped the wrath of COVID-19. And I can tell you that Corona-19 is not welcome in our house or anywhere else. Thank you very much for inviting us. Thank you so much, Shabir. We appreciate it. And we're glad we got you back on the sound there. Uh, next, I'd like to go ahead and just to touch on that, I don't think anybody uh, household is open to COVID-19 at this point. <laughs> um, with that, thank you, Shabir. Next, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the Council General of Canada and Miami, the Honorable Susan Harper. Well, thank you very much. And uh, I'd like to uh, say to everyone here, what a pleasure and an honor it is to speak uh, partly as a member of the Canadian community, but also as a member of this interfaith and international community celebrating Ramadan together. I had two thoughts that I wanted to share, both messages that I received during the month of Ramadan. First, the message that our prime minister sent out on April 23rd, which said, traditionally Ramadan is a time of collective gathering. Families and friends observe Ramadan by getting together, fasting during the day and ending, during, ending their day with iftar. This year, Ramadan will look different as we continue to fight the global COVID pandemic and work to protect our communities by staying home and following the advice of public health experts. From mosques hosting Friday prayers online to families having iftar virtually, Muslim Canadians will be doing their part this year. During this crisis, the values at the heart of Islam, compassion, gratitude, and generosity resonate more than ever as we see Muslim Canadians helping their neighbors. A time of charity and spiritual contemplation, Ramadan reminds us to put the needs of others All right, I think we lost the Honorable Susan Harper. Let me just check here. All right, I'm very sorry about that, folks. Um, so we'll just go ahead and move along to the next speaker. Um, I'd like to go ahead and introduce the Executive Director of MCCJ, Mr. Nestor Rodriguez. Nestor, thank you for joining us. Thank you. So uh, first of all, can you hear me? Yes, we can hear you. <laughs> Great, because I've had very, very spotty sound. 
Thank you for the opportunity uh, to participate in today's 305 Iftar. It's truly an honor to share this virtual stage with colleagues, friends, especially my Muslim colleagues and friends, as well as the dignitaries. I'm grateful for this moment also as we demonstrate solidarity among ourselves and as we celebrate the work we do to keep Miami engaged as a multicultural and inclusive community. I also see this as an opportunity to reflect on my own spirituality and the faiths of others and how we can unite and stay strong in the face of this new challenge. It's called COVID-19. Uh, I hope we can all break bread together next year in person. As executive director of MCCJ, I'm grateful for the 85 year old legacy and vision of its founders, which inspires our board and staff to do the work we do every day. Um, although we're not a religious organization, MCCJ was founded on interfaith goodwill. And our clergy dialogue is the longest running in the country. What began as a Uh, Nestor, I think we've lost. Nestor, can you hear me? Have we lost audio for Nestor? MCCJ combats bullying and discrimination. During times of crisis, MCCJ has provided Miami-Dade with a much needed uh, safety net as a convener, providing opportunities for candid and sensitive dialogue among diverse groups of people and helping them find common ground to build bridges and resolve conflict. MCCJ's clergy dialogue has answered the call of healing, serving and enlightening our community through its sponsorship of interfaith services and partnerships. These efforts focus on strengthening spiritual and religious unity and promoting civil and respectful dialogue that creates communal cohesion rather than division. MCCJ's clergy dialogue is presently working with NYU's Wagner Rogers School of Public Service to launch the Religious Leadership Civic Engagement Project, which is based on the idea that faith leaders can make a difference if they convene to resolve a specific community issue. We know that Miami is a laboratory for the future of the United States. Here, where our signature is diversity, we are a model for the demographics of what the nation will look like in the ensuing decades but we cannot be hopeful, a hopeful model unless we craft the path that takes the raw material of a multicultural population and fabricates a society which is truly inclusive. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Nestor. Um, and we thank, you know, MCJ has really been a close partner of the Jaffer Center um, since we've been up and running. And uh, so we thank you and, and your team for that. Uh, next, I'd like to go ahead and introduce Mr. Brian Siegel, uh, the Regional Director of the American Jewish Committee for Miami and Broward Counties. Uh, Mr. Siegel, we're very happy to have you here today. Could you please tell us what you're thankful for? Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mohammed, and Ramadan Mubarak, and Salam Aleichem, Shalom Aleichem. I'm uh, really proud to be here representing the American Jewish Committee and also the Muslim Jewish Advisory Council along with my co-chair and my brother, Saif Ishouf. Uh, at this holy time of Ramadan, we are called upon to spotlight role models and amplify stories that show us what it looks like to lead with integrity and compassion, to serve others and create a better community and world. And as COVID-19, as the pandemic spreads across our country and throughout the world, I'm grateful to see some of the best of humanity in the form of first responders, healthcare professionals, and community leaders like those here tonight. I'm also grateful to have the opportunity to work for AJC, the leading global Jewish advocacy organization, where since our founding in 1906, we've understood that the safety and security of the Jewish community is inextricably linked to that of other minority communities, including the Muslim community. This was the impetus behind the formation of the Muslim Jewish Advisory Council, which brings together business, political, and religious leaders in the American Jewish and American Muslim communities to advocate jointly for issues of common concern. 
The council has two policy objectives, to combat the rise in hate crimes directed at our two communities and to promote the positive image of Muslim and Jewish citizens of the United States. Unfortunately, during this time of coronavirus, we're also witnessing the harassment of Jews, Muslims, Asian Americans, immigrants, and other minority groups who are being outrageously linked to the spread of the disease. Especially in times like these, now is the time to stand in solidarity with each other to combat hate and xenophobia. One way we can do this is by urging members of Congress to co-sponsor the No Hate Act, which was adopted by the US House on Friday and would begin to address inadequacies in hate crime data collection by incentivizing state and local law enforcement authorities to improve hate crime reporting. Our senators should be urged to approve this legislation. I truly appreciate this opportunity to speak tonight and for the great work of FIU, Cosmos, and all of the other partners on here. I want to wish all of our Muslim brothers and sisters a joyous and meaningful holiday. May the blessings you received during Ramadan be with you in the year ahead. Thank you. Wonderful, thank you so much, Brian, and we really appreciate you joining us tonight. Um, we actually have back on the Honorable Susan Harper, so with a few more minutes, I'm gonna go ahead and turn the floor back over to her uh, to let her finish. Um, thank you very much. Uh, I, I'm not sure at what point you lost me, so I'll start again. Um, uh, I was asked to speak today, I think, as a member of both the Canadian community and the interfaith and international community. And I wanted to share two messages that I had received during Ramadan. First from the prime minister, uh, he sent out a message on April 23rd, which said, traditionally Ramadan is a time of collective gathering. Families and friends observe Ramadan by getting together, fasting during the day and ending their day with iftar. This year, Ramadan will look different as we continue to fight the global COVID pandemic and work to protect our communities by staying home and following the advice of public health experts. From mosques hosting Friday prayers online to families having iftar virtually, Muslim Canadians will be doing their part this year. During this crisis, the values at the heart of Islam, compassion, gratitude, and generosity resonate more than ever as we see Muslim Canadians helping their neighbors. A time of charity and spiritual contemplation, Ramadan reminds us to put the needs of others before our own and to practice those values in our daily lives. Let us take the time to recognize and show gratitude for the invaluable contributions Muslim Canadians make each day to our country. And the second message came from a colleague who has the responsibility of being the champion of visible minorities in my department. And uh, visible minorities is a term in Canada that we use for, for people of color. And he said, as we work through the adaptation to the COVID pandemic, we are hearing some inspiring and some disturbing information on how visible minorities are experiencing the COVID crisis. In terms of inspiration, it is amazing to see the extent to which visible minorities are on the front lines of the pandemic response in Canada. From our chief public health officer, Dr. Teresa Tam, to our emergency room doctors and nurses, to the caregivers in our seniors' homes, to the meat processing workers who keep our food supply intact, the commitment and the contributions of Canada's visible minorities are nothing short of heroic. But unfortunately, we are also seeing the damage caused by othering discrimination and the scapegoating of minorities and foreigners in many countries, including here at home. The COVID crisis offers an opportunity for all of us to cultivate our best qualities, patience, perseverance, and kindness. This is particularly in the spirit of the month of Ramadan, because when we are connected to each other, we are all visible. Thank you. Thank you so much, Susan, and uh, we're very glad we got you back on here. Uh, I want to thank all of our speakers and everyone for joining us this evening, and I want to go ahead and close out with one final speaker, Mr. 305 Cafecito Chat himself, 
Uh, please help me in welcoming Saifis Shouf, who is a senior fellow at the Stephen J. Green School of International and Public Affairs. Saif. Good afternoon. Good evening, everyone. Ramadan Mubarak to all of our friends. I can't imagine what it's like to have an iftar ceremony. And here we all are doing an iftar ceremony virtually via Zoom. I want to start off by thanking all of our community partners for making today's 305 Iftar a success. I don't want to forget anybody's names, so I'm going to shout them all out. First of all, we want to appreciate our friends from AJC. We want to appreciate our friends from Global Ties Miami. We want to appreciate Imam Samra and the MCA communities. We want to appreciate Coalition of South Florida Muslim Organizations, as well as the Muslim Jewish Advocacy Committee, as well as our friends at MCCJ. And of course, most especially, we'd like to appreciate the leadership of our FIU, Dean John Stack, our president, Dr. Mark B. Rosenberg, the center, founding center director of our Dr. Uh, Dr. Mohsen Jaffer and Fazia Jaffer Center for Muslim World Studies, Dr. Moedi Mizbahi, and of course, our friend, our champion, Dr. Mohsen Jaffer, and our friends who spoke tonight, including, of course, our friend, the mayor of the city of Miami. I just want to basically say, as we close out tonight, that our 305 Iftar was created as a space for members of our South Florida community to convene and build community together during these unusual times. And I wanted to also make sure, because as uh, Muhammad said, I wanted to infuse a little bit of Miami energy and quote one of the great urban poets of South Florida, who is Muslim American and Arab American, DJ Khaled, who said, yes, DJ Khaled said, we the best. And the reality is that our Miami is the best. Together, we build community, one kuroketa at a time, one matzo ball at a time, and one samosa at a time. And our 305 Iftar is meant to embody that spirit. And so for everybody who's here with us tonight at our 305 Iftar, we the best. Or more importantly, we are the best when we come together as a community. We're very grateful for everybody who took time to join us in this unusual journey of trying to create a virtual space to celebrate Ramadan, and more importantly, to celebrate the power of community during these unusual times. We know that together we can accomplish so much more, and it's times like this that the power of dialogue, the power of convening, the power of knowledge are the things that will unite us. And most importantly, we wanna close out by sending a special appreciation to those first line healthcare heroes that are out there keeping us safe. I also wanna give an appreciation for the fact that there are spiritual first responders that are helping to remind us. They're in synagogues, they're in churches, they're in mosques, they're in community centers, they're coaches, they're mentors, they're friends, and they're helping to remind all of us that amidst this crisis, together we can come out stronger. And so, although it's not grammatically correct, and we know FIU, we're a university, and I have friends in the English department that will correct me afterwards for saying we the best, but the reality is when we come together, one kuroketa at a time, one matzo ball at a time, and yes, one samosa at a time, we can come out of this that much stronger. And with that, I'm gonna pass it back over to Muhammad. For all of us who are fasting, uh, we're reminded that it's actually about time, Imam, I believe, for us to break fast. So we're not over time. We wanna thank everyone, we wanna appreciate everyone, and please stay engaged with all of the activities of our Jaffer Center for Muslim World Studies. Looking forward to staying connected, and we wish everybody a healthy, safe Ramadan. Thank you so much, Saif. And with that, we'll go ahead and close. But you did forget one thing, from cafecito, samosa, to a date. Um, so from our table to yours. It's right there. There, there we it. go. Rory and I, we got it. We're ready. <laughs> So I want to thank all our speakers. Thank you, everyone at home for tuning in and joining us. Um, we know it's time to go ahead and get ready to break fast. So I do not want to stand between um, any of the Muslims out there and their iftar. So thank you so much for joining us. And uh, we hope you have a great evening and happy early Eid Mubarak. Thank you. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Thanks, everyone.